Welcome to the El Campo house. We're actually getting ready to start. Things are going on. I'm going to go through and explain it all to you, show you the rooms, and give you an idea of what's going on. Please join me. Come on in. To begin with, we've got our kitchen. This is actually a very early primitive kitchen, but you'll see a beautiful, beautiful stove in the corner. Um, something like this when it's all restored, for example, just one little toy in this many, many things here. This is a uh, O'Keefe and Merritt, and you'll see it has all of its parts and pieces. It has the big griddle in the middle. Look at that. Uh, just incredible. Um, all restored. This could go for $1,000 to $2,000. Um, they're just uh, a good old workhorse. Um, as you see as you're looking through here, we've got a lot of beadboard, all beadboard walls, all beadboard ceilings. It's incredible. Nice condition. This is the first paint that was ever put on it, the only paint probably ever put on it. In the side here we have what was probably the pantry or an off room. This little room right here, one of the things we'll tear off first, little shed areas. These don't produce a lot of great wood, but they will get some nice one by tens. This is all, uh, looks like a loblolly pine in this case, and some of this is longleaf pine. It's high grain, a little darker. We'll go into that a little more later on. And then over on this side, this is pretty well shot. We won't get much out of here. But in the ceiling even, we've got some nice one by 12 plank in the ceiling here. Um, and as far as the wholesale on that, you're looking at maybe a dollar, dollar fifty a linear foot. Retail could be as much as five dollars on something like that. So it starts adding up real quick. Um, the beauty of this kind of thing is that even when you're walking through it, everything you look at, for example, here's a simple door. Doesn't look like a whole lot. Four panel, no knots, very thin, inch and a quarter, maybe inch in this case, one inch thick. The beauty of this is that this door, if you want to use it for a tiny house, great for a pocket door, bathroom door, lots of possibilities. This is a cute old element when you wish to plug up the flue. That's an old pan lid, and that's actually been used to go ahead and plug the flue going upstairs to stop the wind from coming down. As we walk through here, it gets a little dark in here. You'll see we're going through the dining room. This is going to have a bunch of beadboard in it, but otherwise not very um, special. You will see the brick fireplace on the other side, and this will produce um, a good bit of brick for us, probably 500 to 1,000 brick. Um, when this was done, these are early brick. If we find any with names on them and they got the right names, oof, sometimes a brick can be worth 100 bucks just because there are brick collectors out there and uh, certain brick plants were really only around for a short period of time. And uh, there's one like, for example, in Flatonia, I mean, uh, yeah, Welder, Flatonia, excuse me, Flatonia, that was actually around for two weeks. Those bricks sell for $200 a piece. It burned down within two weeks of being built. Okay, this is gonna be one of the prizes of the whole place right here. What we're looking at here is a stairwell, very high pitch, on the risers, you have a lot, of, uh, a lot of rise and not very much tread. This is back when people had short feet. Now you're required to have 12 inches. This gives you an idea how little these feet must have been. That's probably less than nine inches, somewhere around eight inches on these treads. Um, the idea was to climb as fast as you could and uh, they didn't really have a lot of concern about size 14 feet like mine. Over here, this is the grand entry we're standing in. Here's another fireplace, or flue. This is for the heaters, and you would have had it access from several rooms. This, again, is going to produce another 500 to 1,000 brick, and uh, this is a red brick, which means the other one's probably a red brick, too. The other one was painted. Downstairs, first room on the right. This has been converted over time. They actually added a closet, and uh, the, you can see the foundation, how it's settled, and it's actually bent these boards at the top, literally bent them. A beauty of longleaf pine is you can actually bend it like that and it doesn't snap. We've seen some that have been bent as much as three or four inches before. As you swing around over here and you look, you can see where they added a closet. Closets, historically, they cost you money. Um, you're charged by how many rooms you had in the house. So you'll notice as we go through the house, the only time you see closets, they were added in. Um, in the old days, they were taxed, in other words, based on how many rooms there were in a house, and this was considered a room no matter how small it was, if it had a door on it. Again, as we go through, you're gonna see these beautiful doors that have been painted with a, a nice milk paint border and then a yellow milk paint in the panels. 
beautiful, beautiful. I wouldn't do hardly anything except clean them up and try to reuse them as we can. Another thing unusual about this is a lot of these are um, seven foot um, doors. You can see when they tried to keep them from sagging by putting nails in here, which is the wrong way to do it. You're supposed to knock in these um, their little uh, wedges that hold the doors together. On the other side of the entryway, you have to understand originally, let's take a look right here, just so that you understand, this was the front of the house originally. This would have been your door in. Still is a door in, just won't come in because the house is bent so bad. Um, this would have been your grand entryway. And then we come off to the other room to the front. Please follow me in. Get a feel for what was probably the lightest room in the house. Um, this would have a window on the front, which we haven't cleared out yet. And uh, this is the window out to this side. Again, beautiful beadboard. And this is a really nice robin's egg blue. A little bit of a whitish blue in it. Um, somebody mixed this color back with the milk paint. They only had four base, or six, six, eight basic colors, really eight. And they mix the blue or the green and the white and get a lighter color. The beauty of these walls in the middle, this is special. This is really special. This is beaded on both sides, you'll notice. These are inch and a quarter thick boards with a tongue and groove on them that start at the bottom underneath the floor and go all the way up through this floor into the next, all the way up into the attic. And the boards will probably run the whole length. And if you look at this, this is just a piece that's put on it for trim for the door. The wall itself is only about an inch and a quarter thick going up to the second floor. That's actually what's carrying the second floor is this right here, this little inch and a quarter thick. But because it was longleaf pine, it was so incredibly strong, you could bear that load on it, just a standing board, probably not much thicker than my hand, standing going up literally 16, 18 feet. And you could stand the second floor just by putting boards on the side of it and hanging it on the side. It's amazing, amazing the strength. Um, again, you saw another beautiful door. Uh, we can't even close them because they're all wedged. But another gorgeous door showing the colors, natural colors of the greens and the yellows. And with just a little bit of sanding, that'll have so much character. You can see the grain coming through where the dust has settled on it over the years. Let's go upstairs now. This is, again, these stairs are very unusual. Um, the climb on these is incredible. The rise. Um, and you can see where this has been around for so long that even the treads have got wear on them. As you look at them as you're coming up, and you'll see the wear on the treads where they've been worn off over the last hundred plus years it's been around. As you come up, you have the grand area again, <clears throat> sort of the central hallway. The central hallway in this case leads out to what would have been a big, big balcony over here. And you would come out here in the evenings. All the knobs as you go through, these are all an early porcelain knob. Whoops. These are all an early porcelain knob known as a mineral knob. Um, they're on lock boxes. These, uh, these are known under a number of different names, but surface mount has a little lock on it. So you just push it back or forward to do a lock there, or you can lock it with a key. And uh, the knobs themselves are made out of a, a clay with a porcelain coating on them. And then molten lead is put in the back and they sink the shank, the shank into it. And a very simple primitive knob um, all through the house. These are usually indicative of about 1880s, uh, somewhere in that range. Again, another closet that was added in, and you can tell the beadboard is different than over here. Not quite as uh, thick. And you can see from here, it's only three quarters of an inch thick. This has got some of the original Uh, wallpaper on it, but it's just a paper wallpaper. It's not a cloth wallpaper. So it probably was put on a little later. Um, and it wasn't put on with uh, cheesecloth, which is normal. So again, indicative of it being added later on in the house. This room right here has been taking quite a bit of water damage, but you can see right there, just looking all the way through the wall, right under the floor right there. And then over here, one of the things you have to watch out for whenever you're working on these houses is going through to the first floor the fast way. Whoops, there's a good example right there. What to watch out for whenever it's wet. You get spots like this, you break a leg in a heartbeat. But it's not just the leg you're breaking, it's the fact that you're gonna probably snag a nail or something on the way down. Or if you're not real lucky, 
you're going to end up having one of these between your legs. <clears throat> this is a really nice sized joist. Gives you an idea of what we're looking for underneath. This is really where the gold is. When it comes to the house, maybe even if we're lucky, we'll find some gold in it. But I mean gold in terms of the, uh, the real lumber. If you'll see inside of here, this is a nice, big, fat 2 by 12 They're spanning side to side for the rooms to sit on. And uh, that is a nice chunk of wood. You're looking at about uh, $5, $6 a linear foot to $8 a linear foot for that material retail. Um, you can make flooring out of it and do all sorts of things. Um, this will have underneath us that ceiling we were looking at below. That's that beadboard. And you can see a lot of this is loose, but even after having been leaked on for 100 years, how well it holds up. Longleaf pine was incredibly resistant to rot. And uh, it was uh, of the 77 species in the United States, longleaf pine was the hardest. It was the strongest. It had uh, 185 years old before we even became mature. A lot of these trees, when they were cut, you're looking at, such as on this one, you can almost see the edges of it. You're looking at 80 to 90 years of growth across the face of this tree, just looking at those lines and counting them. That means that that tree took 90 years to grow that much. We now grow a tree and harvest it full growth in 20 to 30 years. So in that case, that tree would have only grown an inch in 20 years. Well, that means all those growth lines, that's the strength of it. Now, it also happens to be the most resistant to termites, wood borers, any kind of wood bug, um, most resistant to rot. If I didn't say that before, it's the heaviest. It's got the most sap, strongest, had the fewest knots, grew to be 125 feet tall and shed its branches on the bottom as it grew. So it tended to be knotless on the bottom. I've seen beams 30 foot long, 40 foot long without a single knot in the entire length of them. Amazing, amazing. So anyway, that's part of why we're pulling this down. There are no more trees like that. And we're never going to grow another tree like that, but who's going to wait 200 years for a tree to grow? You can't even pay the taxes on the land for that long. So the whole concept has changed. We're growing trees fast and throwing away the old ones. Well, let's just stop doing that. Let's save the old ones and stop growing the new ones and let some natural forest exist again. We have monocultural forests now. What we're basically doing is we're taking one species of tree that isn't um, even natural. It's been a hybrid and we're, growing it for acres and acres and acres and acres, just like almonds and everything else. Nothing can live under it. There's no natural habitat. There's no nuts. There's no berries. There's no food. It's just like the rest of humanity. If you take and convert everything to buildings, there's no place to grow food. You need food. So do the animals. If you don't have the animals, the whole thing breaks down. So let's save the trees. And it's as easy as what we're doing here. This is the best example I could come up with to show everybody the doors, the floors, the walls, everything. It's right here. Let's go look at some more of it. This is a dark room over here, but maybe we'll be able to see a few things. This is done in a, um, a red, really interesting color for a room. Um, I'm probably going to save it just like this and try to use it again. Uh, I don't see this color very often. This is a rare color in milk paint. I have no idea. It must have been a very special room. Obviously, maybe uh, um, for the ladies, because this is not your typical guy color. Um, as we look out the window here, you'll be able to see these are really old windows. They actually have the little stops in the side. This is what we used to do instead of weights. These popped in and out, and that's what held your window in place. As this comes out, it comes out of the hole, lets that window move up and down. It's pretty incredible. These are very thin. These were called, we call them stick props. If you don't have these in them, like this one down here is missing them, then you got to lift it up and you put a stick in there to hold it up. And if the stick gets knocked out, wham, you just guillotine the fingers. So they're not real good for little kids. But as we're looking at this, you can also see the wavies in the glass a little bit at this moment, but we'll show you a little more of that later on. Um, and you look out on top of you, you'll see this um, rooftop of one of the porches where we're tearing off. You can see the tin, and uh, in this case, it's a V groove. And you can also see all the beautiful battens on the side of the house right there that we're pulling off. Those battens, believe it or not, are very special. Um, that's a three inch, three and a half inch wide batten out of uh, um, a longleaf or a cypress. But it's the way they're cut that makes them so special. And we're going to look at those in more detail later. But you can see how many there are and how beautiful they are. That's $1.25 a linear foot 
just for the battens off the outside retail. We got some goodies in here. Now these aren't going to be good for anything other than crafts um, and using them as stationary windows, but they're too thin to put weights on and there's some disadvantages. But on these, you'll see these are all hand blown glass. You can actually see the divots and the dents in them. This was done back when they used to literally take a, a bubble of, uh, and blow it out of glass in a pit and they get really big and then they take it out and they slice it all up and they basically fold it out and make glass out of it. That's when this came from. Thank you for the moment. We'll be back. I'll show you a little bit more a little later on. Bye.